Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over how to use uh, uh, my Sheets for uh, the NBA to make hand-built lineups uh, on DraftKings and on FanDuel uh, for today. And I'm going to try to do this. I'm just going to try to do it every day. It's going to be hard, though. Um, and I also am going to try to do a daily review on how to build – um, Saber sim lineups, um, you know, an MME portfolio um, every day as well as a kind of a supplement to the, the video that Bobby and I will do when we break down all the games. Um, we'll see. It's a big undertaking to commit to that every day, but I'm going to try. And since this is being done a little bit early, it's important to know that this is not going to be the lineup you're going to want to play because projections are going to change or whatever. This is more of a process. And again, it's it's my goal to teach you guys how to play. That's it. Uh, not to give you necessarily who you're supposed to play today, but uh, how to play given the information you have available to you. So again, two completely different approaches: uh, hand building versus using saber sim and all the different you know bells and whistles and and and, and tools available to you, um, which is much more which is really effective for, for building MME type lineups and for building MME portfolios. Um, but here, we're just going to start with the uh, with a hand-built lineup and we are going to start with our sheets. Now, again, this is, this is why I can't do this every day because this is usually only available for premium subscribers. So I have to figure out how to do this. Nonetheless, um, what this looks like is just kind of a list of, of, of players rated in, different ways. Um, column E is by fantasy points. Column F is by points per dollar. Uh, but we're going to default list people by sheets value score. Now, here's what, here is how I would build your, your typical hand-built lineup, given the, um, the tools available to you, meaning these sheets. So here's the secret about these two columns. Point per dollar, especially in the NBA, tends to favor the cheapos. Okay, it tends to get overweight. Uh, it tends to overweight the cheapos. Um, it's easy for a. It's much easier for a three K guy to make five X than it is for an eight K guy to make five X. So the point per dollar uh, rating is going to naturally favor the cheap, uh, the cheap, the the cheap players. On the other hand, when you rate by, say, well, either fantasy points, fantasy points obviously it favors the more expensive players, so they usually rate to high to 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 score more. But even when you rate by a sheet's value score, it tends to favor the top players. I mean, the the, the top salaries, um, because sheet's value score is is the formula, the algorithm, whatever is designed to give more weight to the, the people that can score more fantasy points, okay? Um, not gonna get into where that all comes from, but whatever. Um, so th the point of the matter is when you're looking at this, when you're gonna sort by sheets value score, you're usually gonna get a lot of expensive guys near the top. And when you sort by point per dollar, you're normally gonna get uh, you know, a lot of expensive guys near the top. So what you're looking for uh, to find good plays is the following. And this is, you know, really simple, but the way I start is you want to find when you sort by point per dollar guys that are really expensive or as expensive as possible. Okay. Because if it's going to bias the cheapos, we'd like to find guys that kind of, you know, that, that play into that bias or that, that play into to, that kind of contradict that bias. And likewise, when you sort by sheets value score, you're going to want guys that are naturally cheap because this, this metric tends to favor the more expensive. Now, again, we're not talking about ownership yet. We're going to get to that in a second, specifically with this sling. But to show you what, what, what's going on here, again, when you do this, first by sheet's value score, you see Dayron Sharp just, just completely jump off the page. I mean, you almost never see this, like a $3,300 guy up there. Um so he's an extremely strong player. And we'll get back to Jokic and the, the, Luka. You know, they're, they're obviously good, but 
Duran Sharp is obviously the best player on the board and it's being owned as a result, but, but, you know, we'll get to that later. So Duran Sharp at, Sharp at center is going to be extremely strong. It's going to make playing Jokic difficult, which is kind of weird. I mean, you certainly can play them both. Other guys that kind of rate high and this, this the way of looking at things are guys like Chris Paul. So Chris Paul, again, he's one of the cheaper guys that is near the top in sheets value score. And then you have Jaron Jackson, uh, Alfred Sangoon. Um, so, and then even down to Eric, uh, Evan Mobley. So these are the, the top guys. Now, one thing you'll note is that if you're going to probably play Duran Sharp, it's going to help, you know, uh, if you play someone that's not only center eligible. So Jaron Jackson Jr. is going to be, you know, probably rate the next best guy. Now, again, he is going to be highly owned and maybe people are not, maybe people aren't going to get, try to get burned by him again because he was really popular last time and he was very pedestrian to say the least. But these are the two that I would start with is, is, is Dayron Sharp at center and then Jaron, Jaron Jackson at power forward uh, eligible. So let's put those guys in right now, actually. See what, what we look like here. Uh, the power, uh, where was power forward? We'll put Jared Jackson. Um, in power forward. And we'll get back to, to the other guys on this list in a minute. So now let's go back into point per dollar. We rate them by point per dollar. Now, when we rate guys by point per dollar, again, what we're looking for are the more expensive guys that we can get to. Um, Chris Paul. Okay, and I think we just mentioned him before in the previous thing. So Chris Paul, very strong play. Now, where do we put him? Do we put him at shooting guard or, or uh, actually he's only point guard eligible. So let's put him there. Good idea. All right. So Chris Paul, very strong play. Put him over there. Uh, next guy I'm looking at is, is, is now we're at Jalen Durant. This is another center. And I talked about this early, earlier uh, yesterday and that these centers are always mispriced. So it's uh, – there's Sangoon again. There's Jaron Jackson again. So one of these centers is going to go off. I don't know exactly which one it is. Um, but let's start with – I don't know. You want to go with Jalen Duran? Well, the first guy we look at is probably Jeremy Sohan. Jeremy Sohan is he's multiple position eligible for openers. Um, and he's, you know, 5K near the top of this list. So – We'll put him in. So we'll start with this. Jeremy Sohan. Now you see, we're probably going to be able to get a, a study here at the end of this. I think as far as, again, it's probably going to be a double center build until DraftKings kind of messes their prices up a little bit or messes with their prices. So I guess we go right back to Sangoon again. You know, he's high on this list. We'll go back to um, Sheets Value score. He's pretty high on this list as well. So we'll do Sangoon as the, th that double center. Put him at second again. Um, and this is kind of like our core. You know, this is kind of what we want to do. Now, what I'd like to do is, since nothing else really, really stands out, let's just go back and see what else we can get in here. And the first thing you'll notice is that since we're playing double centers, okay, you can't play Jokic. So you probably want to get one of these guys in here. Now there's some injury news that might make this decision for us. Like if, if um, like Darius Garland is questionable and if he's out, then I think Donovan Mitchell really flies to kind of the top of this. But in either case, Luke is going to be a really strong play. Um, so I wonder if we can afford him. I and mean, we put him in over here. I mean, you probably can get away with this. Okay. You put in Luca, and then play the next top point per dollar plays, and you build your slate that way. Now, if in fact, um, uh, what's his name is out, then I think that that Mitchell is just going to put in that that guard position pretty easily. But as far as that, you know, the absence of that, I think we just do something like this, fill in the rest with good point per dollar plays. Like let's start with who? Kevin Love. We can play him at, for, at power forward, at regular forward. And then some shooting guard at 5K, which is, I actually found him. Um, now, again, this is going to be, I, mean, I don't know, 
obviously Levert's going to be a huge smash play if if um, what's his name is out, Garland is out. Um, anyway, so maybe he's an okay little lower owned if um, if he's uh, if Garland plays. So that's the way I would build this uh, with using uh, the sheets by hand. Um, now, just to show you, it's it's definitely, I, I imagine it's the same. Well, not the same players, but it's the same process. Let's pull up uh, FanDuel. And let's build, let's get to the more expensive ones so I can see it. And again, this is not going to be the EDN lineup. Just to show you the process. So let's get the uh, the FanDuel sheets up, and we'll do these literally the exact same thing. The only difference is, is here you have to be a little more of a stickler for position eligibility usually. But let's just take a look. So again, FanDuel, again, we're sorting by sheets value score and seeing who's cheap that's up here. So once again, you have Sangoon. De'Aaron Fox isn't bad. You know, that's pretty, that's cheap enough at 8,400. I think that's pretty good. So I think we start with Fox and maybe Mobley or Van Vliet or even Jalen Brown. These guys are all going to be pretty popular, but whatever. So, again, we're looking for sheets value score rankings of cheaper guys. So Fox is cheap enough. Uh, you can go to Sangoon again. And then I think you're playing Van Fleet. So that's two point guards. It's a little bit of pain in the neck. Um, so I guess Jalen Brown would be the next one. And what's good about Jalen Brown is he could play both these positions. So let's put these guys in. So Jalen Brown, I don't know which where to put him exactly just yet. But we're going to one at a time. We're doing that. Video in like 10 minutes. I'll, I'll be done with this. And we'll play Fox over here. We'll start with these two. And then same thing. We'll sort by point per dollar and see if there's any expensive guys up here. Once again, Van Vliet. So I'm getting the Van Vliet again. So let's let's play them both. All right, that's a good way to start. This be it looks like a good middle league build here. Jalen Brown again. Sangoon again. Dayron Sharp uh, showing up, our, our good friend over there. Look at Zach Collins. This isn't bad. Let's put in uh, let's put in Zach Collins or Mobley. No, actually, or either or both. Actually, put them both in. Screw it. So we'll put in Zach Collins. So this is this. We're not going to probably play any studs here. This is going to be a uh, middle league build. We'll go back to Mobley. And at 6000 a man, you could fill the rest of these in, you know, with good point per dollar plays. Wow, Scott, Scoot Henderson, not bad. Coming off kind of a dud performance. I bet you he'll be low on. It says only 20, says 23%, but I don't know about that. Can you put him in utility? No, you can't, actually. There's no utility over here. Crap. All these flat point guards. Um, so I guess we go back to Sangoon again. At center. 5,500 a man should be kind of easy to do. Let's take a look. Uh, shooting guards, just take, take the best. I would just at this point, just take the best point per dollar shooting guards we have. And that would be Dylan Brooks and Jalen Green. And again, we're just using our sheets to kind of just build this. Jalen Green and Dylan Brooks. Who are we going to be able to get this? He's only 44 or 500. That, that, that works. And then find 5,800 for a uh, small forward. I, I, we should probably be able to do that. Almost Gordon Hayward. So, I mean, up oh, there it is right there. So, we have, so you could play that too. 
And really, that's about it. Now, again, you could you could make adjustments for ownership and you could just kind of restack. But this is the way you build kind of like really good cores and be kind of confident that they're pretty well projected. Um, you know, you make a couple of tweaks for ownership, like I think I did. And that's the way you use the sheets to build hand-built liners. Um, again, we're going to do a totally separate video on building with, uh, with, uh, with SaberSim, but hopefully that helps.